welcome back. So over the weekend, I got this uh, nose gear linkage sorted out and had uh, Brit uh, re-weld that little tab on there. And also I had this uh, front bit painted, or well, I painted it, and that was the one that we did a while ago and I put the magnet on there for the lights, indicator lights, and got the aircraft working there with respect to the gear so you can see I've got everything up and retracted. So that was uh, one of the things that I hadn't done yet uh, after putting that longer linkage on the nose gear. And as you can see, the doors close there all the way nicely now. Obviously, the gear goes all the way up in there. So uh, that's pretty much sorted out now. And likewise here on the uh, main gear, you can see that there wasn't really anything to do there, but those doors are all sort of snug in there. I'm not really sure I'm going to do anything yet. On those lower door areas there seeing that the air just sort of flows in there and, and swirls around the tire I don't think it's going to create a big problem there at least not initially and same thing over here uh, on the other side um, with that the right hand uh, gear leg that's all sorted in there so there's really not much to do left uh, on the gear now that's ready for uh, you know you know once we get the first couple of flights in there to be able to retract that gear without too many problems and uh, so on to the next thing which is not really urgent but something that uh, needs to be done eventually and that's uh, the alignment or the realignment of the landing and taxi lights so because now that the gear leg is more vertical those lights are just pointing towards the ground quite a bit and as you can see tucked up, it, tucked up in there you know when the gears retracted they're actually touching that uh, the lower arm there and on the front edge there so what I'm gonna to have to do is move them backwards on the fork there and also uh, angle them upwards so it's gonna require a new bracket be made for that but uh, anyway all right finally uh, back out again engine running everything sorted with the gear and I'm just gonna take it for taxi over to the other side and I want to do a quick run-up from when the uh, oil temps hit 150 for full power and see how long I have before it gets too hot um, from those from those settings. So uh, let's get over there before it uh, warms up too much. All right, so I've also got cameras out on both wings there, so uh, I can see uh, kind of what uh, those ailerons are doing now that they've got um, appropriate weight out on them, counterweight. A lot of time here, already 140 degrees, but uh, let me put, put the chocks out, give this a whirl. This is to simulate starting going down the runway and then uh, um, full power climb out to know how many seconds we have for full power before it gets too hot. So uh, basically, here we go. Cherokee traffic, uh, 85 Golf Tango going around, uh, off the runway 23 Cherokee. Let the governor come in here. Cherokee traffic at King Air Force, Delta Papa, is the front base, 23 Cherokee. Cherokee traffic, uh, King Air 4, Delta Pavos turning, final 23, Cherokee. Uh, Cherokee traffic, uh, Skyhawk 85, Delta Tango, uh, 
Morning, uh, crosswind, uh, commander, left downwind for runway 23, Cherokee. Cherokee traffic, Bonanza 555 Romeo is 5 miles to the east, 4,500 will be over on the field to the west. Cherokee. Oh, I gotta let that cool down. Had to pull the power back a little bit there. As it got in because the EGTs were starting to come up around 1700. Don't really want to run them that high. It didn't take much to bring it back down to 14. So kind of right on the edge there. Cherokee traffic, and if I've got Tango, uh, downwind, uh, left traffic for 23 Cherokee. I let the coolant oil temps come up to about 240. So here's what the complete log looked like for today. And this section here that I'm just about to highlight is the section there where I just did that run up. And as you can see, I just slowly ramped in the power there because I wanted to have the governor just come in slowly and not sort of come in as quickly as it does when I go down the runway. So that would make a difference. But uh, overall, took it up to 100% there and about a minute in is where I was looking at the EGTs there and see um, you know, approaching 1700. And I don't really want to run it at 17.50 for very long, so, and I could see that was coming. So that's where I backed off the power back to about 72% there, 75%. And uh, immediately the EGTs dropped down, so that's good. So this would be like equivalent to pulling the power back just a little bit once you're, you know, climbing out. And then I noticed uh, I was watching the, the coolant and oil temps there climbing up in the high 220s. And so that's when I backed off there. And they can go to 240. I just didn't see the point in really pushing it here because I made it to about two minutes here. And that's enough time, I think, to uh, climb up to pattern altitude. So uh, and then you can see the fuel flow 14.6 there with a lower power and about 20 there. So I pulled the power back about 30, 35% there. Um, but, that's, you know, still plenty of boost there. I still have like 40 PSI. So, uh, and the temps ultimately got to 240, but I didn't lose any coolant out of the overflow there, which is good. So overall, that's a pretty good run. I think two minutes is enough time for um, takeoff and climb out. Right, I'm just going to taxi up and down a little bit and uh, see how those ailerons feel and look. There wasn't, uh, there wasn't any coolant in my ultimate overflow bottle there that catches what comes out of the reservoir so that's good I didn't uh, didn't take it uh, hot enough for it to you know overflow the system so 240 seems like a good number because 250 is it always sort of uh, overflows it a little bit so you can find some bumps Like he's taxing the 2005. Turn around here. Uh, so far I haven't felt it, even the slightest bit of side movement on the stick here, just taxiing around at all. And there's, you know, very little play in it all. I need to take a little bit of weight out of that right hand side one if I want to, you know, perfectly balance it. But it's, I mean, so much more, uh, I mean it wasn't bad before when I've just had just the spades on. So this, you know, how much I've got to balance now in comparison to that should make a, a massive difference. Let's go down here to five and see if that other guy was looked like he was taxiing down there. Just give it a little short 40 mile an hour, 40 knot run down five, see how it feels. 
As usually, I think there's a couple bumps up here as you transition onto the taxiway from the ramp here. Yeah, I'm not feeling any movement in the stick at all when I went over that. I uh, still don't have my glow plug sorted out. Um, looking for a transform, maybe three different transformers that can run at 20 amps, and go 12 volts down the pond. Cherokee traffic, experimental two tango, Delta, runway five, high speed taxi, Cherokee. Yeah, it looks like he shut down over there. I didn't hear anybody else in the pattern. really good. I didn't feel any movement in the stick whatsoever over the few bumps that were up there. We'll see how we go this way. Of course, I didn't take it very fast, but oftentimes the uh, big bumps, are, you feel it more when you're going slow. Cherokee traffic, Spremel, 2 Tango, Delta, runway 23, high speed taxi, Cherokee. Right, let's see how we go up here. Cherokee traffic, uh, that's a four off is six miles to the north. Uh, coming in on the RNAV 23 in practice approach. Take it slow again. Okay, something. Good, got a track, 9 0 uh, about uh, five and a half miles from the uh, 45 on the left down one for 2 3. Good job. I noticed all the new markings out here now. See what happens when we hit the bumps up here. Yeah, not, not feeling even the slightest bit of movement in the stick. Nothing induced from the ailerons. Those fancy markings on the runway. Definitely feels uh, much better on the stick with it not, you know, going back and forth, even just like a, the little bit that it was doing before when I just had the spades on there. But I'm pretty happy about that. Those guys are going out on the runway, and the guys on the three mile, I can see him there. All right. Last run. Go a little bit quicker this time, but not too much.
say my problem of aileron the bouncing around is solved. Not even the slightest feeling of movement coming from that. From the couple bumps that are out there. Delta clear two three Cherokee. All right, gonna head back to the hangar and uh, pack it up and go and make a video for you guys. So that's my update. Two three five eight five zero. We're on base two three. How rude, interrupting me. So that's my update for the first half of this week, and uh, not sure if I put out an update this weekend. We've got Thanksgiving, so. Everybody's kind of taking vacation time off Thursday and Friday, so I'll see. I'll see if I come up here and do some runs or whatever. But uh, if not, uh, have a happy Thanksgiving if you're in the U.S. And for everyone else, I'll see you in the next video.